What's Shake and Fire Nation? JLD here, and welcome to episode 1896 of EO Fire, where I chat with entrepreneurs on fire seven days a week. It's time, Fire Nation, to chat with today's featured guest, Natalie Sisson. Natalie, are you prepared to ignite? Absolutely. Yes. Natalie is dedicated to helping entrepreneurs design a freedom business they love that supports their ideal lifestyle through her freedom plan, blog, podcast, and best-selling suitcase entrepreneur book. Natalie, take a minute, fill in some gaps from that intro and give us a little glimpse of your personal life. Well, actually, my personal life has flipped like 180 degrees from when we first met. So I've been traveling around the world, living out of a suitcase for the last six and a half years of my life to 70 countries, running my business, meeting amazing people and showing other business owners how to have more freedom in their business. And uh, about six months ago to the day, I came back to my home country of New Zealand bought an incredible property with two and a half acres of land, got a puppy, five chickens, and now have this completely different, beautiful freedom in nature. Um, And it's completely flipped my world. So it's quite an exciting time. What I love, though, is that you still hung on to that word freedom and you still hung on to freedom in general. I mean, you had freedom when you were traveling the world. You have freedom on your two acres. You've just created freedom in your life. Yeah, I have. It's my highest value. And I think when you focus on it all the time, you naturally have more of it. And it's really fascinating to see the different types of freedom that people have in it. I'm doing a huge research study on that, by the way, at the moment, just to uncover it more. Because we talk about freedom a lot, but I think it means so many different things to different people. And nobody definitively has a definition for it. Like there's no one arching definition because it's so unique to each person and their circumstances. Fire Nation, if you're recognizing Natalie's voice, it's probably because number one, she's awesome. Number two, you've probably listened to her amazing podcasts. And number three, like, you know, she's, she's everywhere. Like she's speaking, she's blogging, she's podcasting, she's doing presentations from stage. We are blessed to have her presence though for the first time in 1869 episodes. Natalie, you were episode 27 of wow. Entrepreneur on Fire. We haven't had you back on for 1869 episodes, which is shame on me, number one. But Fire Nation, go back literally and listen to that episode because number one, you're going to hear a very different JLD. I'm like as green as it comes on episode 27. (laughs) That was pre-launch because you were one of my power 40, I call them, where I reached out to 40 people before my launch. So I interviewed you before I launched the podcast. I was green as green could be. And luckily, Natalie had plenty of experience, so she carried the interview. And you want to hear her life story, (laughs) her worst moment, her aha moment, the lightning round. Little has changed in 1869 episodes. But today, of course, we're flipping things around because you're a repeat guest. We're going to be talking about a lot of awesome stuff. But I want to start off with how do you, Natalie, go from blog to crowdfunding to self-published bestseller to published book? I mean, that's quite the progress. Take us through that progress. It's pretty nuts, isn't it? I don't think most people who actually get to writing a book, and you know how difficult that can be. It's an effort in itself just to write the book, let alone market it. But to then have it picked up by a publisher is kind of a dream come true. So yeah, I, like you, have blogged for years and years and years and put most of my best content on my blog. And from that, actually realized I had enough content finally back in 2012 um, to write a book. And so in 2013, just before my birthday, I did this really terrible, kind of crappy, actually, video outside. I was in Borneo, so I had like a fly land on my nose, and um, (laughs) I I just, I was sweating a little bit, and there was not good lighting, but I was out in the jungle, and I was saying, I really, really want to write this book, The Suitcase Entrepreneur for You, about creating freedom in business and adventure in life, and if you want me to write it, then please support my Kickstarter, and back then, Kickstarter was still pretty new, right? I mean, you've crushed it on there, but back then... It was mainly used for sort of people launching, as it is now, like products and games. And I thought, what if I put the book out there, but more than the book, the actual idea and essence behind it. And luckily, my community came to the rallied and um, it got like 167% funded. It was awesome. Um, And I basically asked for enough that I would have been getting on an entry-level publishing contract. Um, So I got around 10,000 US dollars. And actually, you don't even usually get that anymore. And it was brilliant. And I said, okay, great. If, if this passes the fundraising goal, I'm going to write this book and you're going to have it in the next four months. So as you know, there's nothing like setting a goal um, that lights your 
lights your ass on fire that you have to actually <laughs> uphold. And you were there for my book launch tour in the US yeah. in Portland, the World Domination Summit. You were right there. That's probably, I think, the first time we met. Yeah, Chris Ducker introduced you. I remember it so clearly. He did. It was fantastic. Like 120 people turned up, and I had I didn't actually have the book at the book launch. It was hilarious. I had the digital version of it in this cool little funky ahead of its time scratch off piece of paper kind of thing um and then the book came out just under a month later on amazon and became a bestseller in the first week and mainly because so many of my community had already read it or received it were ready to review it and it was just like a dream come true to get that out there and go on the book tour and then what I was so ironic is I put out a second edition a couple of years later because a lot of the tools in the book, you know, go out of date. I was picking really new startups in some places, innovation, technology, things update at the speed of light, as you know. Um, so I put out a second edition and then I found an agent um, late last year and I said, you know, I'd really like to get my next book out, The Freedom Plan. And so he approached a bunch of publishers and one of them came back to me and said, we really love the suitcase entrepreneur. Would you be interested in giving us mm -hmm. the North American publishing rights? And that was Simon and Schuster, um, which is huge. They're one of the top five, and it was the North Star Way, their business arm. And I was like, really, you want to publish a book that I've already written that's already out there, that's already sold? And they said, yeah, because it's done really well, and we like your style, and we think it's it's great. And so, yeah, straight forward to literally a couple of weeks ago, here it is live for the first time in bookstores, which – um, John, I'm just so excited about because, you know, like it's so much cooler to see your book in a bookstore, oh. even though so many of the sales are digital because it's just much easier format and it's so much easier to travel with. But being in a bookstore is pretty neat. So it's just bizarre how long this book has been around and it's even better now because I edited the entire third edition and it's just great to see it out there and getting into hands of new people who have never heard of it before. It is cool. And I will say, like, you know, as an author, like, just to kind of picture people wandering a bookstore, you know, like that epic place that a bookstore is, and to stumble across your book randomly, you know, not because Amazon recommended it or because they searched for it purposely, but just because they just stumbled upon it. And then there's your book with a cover and it draws them in. They read the first few pages and they're like, I want this book. I mean, that is just epic. That's the epitome. And, and you've accomplished that, Natalie, which is so, so exciting. And you've done it because. You've been able to teach others to design a business that absolutely suits their lifestyle. So that's you, Fire Nation. If you want to create a business that suits your lifestyle, this is what Natalie's been doing. She's been sharing the secret, the recipe for success, the ingredients. Talk to us about that. How do we do this? <laughs> you get my book. No, I actually think... <laughs> As you very, very clearly talk about, you know, in your Freedom Journal, um, is getting really, really clear on what you want out of life. And it seems so simple, but the amount of people that I talk to who are like, if I say to them, what's your perfect day? And they're like, oh, you know, I've never thought about it before. I just kind of get out of bed and let the day happen to me. And I'm, well, where would you be if you could be anywhere in the world? Where would you wake up? What would you be looking at? Who would you be with? How would you spend your time? Like, what would be the first thing you do in the morning? And I can guarantee in your perfect world, it wouldn't be checking your Facebook feed from bed and then like grabbing a cup of coffee <laughs> and rolling straight into work. Um, maybe, maybe some people listen to that going, oh, no, I love that. But for those of you who want a real life, no, and who want some fun, you know, it could be totally different. You might be on the beach. Um, you might be heading down with your beautiful dog and doing some yoga. You might be getting up to do a, an early morning swim. You might have your butler bring you breakfast in bed. Who knows? But the point is, the clearer you get around what you want your lifestyle to look like, the quicker and more easily it's going to come to you. Because as you know, John, it's you manifest this stuff. Like the minute you focus on what you want, it actually starts to manifest in your life. And that's because your thoughts are wired towards what you want to happen. And when I've gone through this with my clients, my community, through my blog and through my freedom plan, some people are like, oh my gosh, Natalie, I didn't think it would come this quickly. So they put together a three-year plan for their life and business based off this cool template that I have. And 60% of what happened, what I wanted to happen, happened in the first year of my three-year wow. painted picture. So it's a little bit scary once you focus on it, but I do believe that most people don't lead the life they want because they've never actually thought about what it looks like in detail. Oh, I love how you describe that. And Fire Nation, that word manifest is just not used enough. Think about it. Absorb the words Natalie is saying because the truth is ringing from ear to ear. And Natalie's going to be dropping some more value bombs on us as soon as we get back from thanking our sponsors. 
Social media can be a powerful tool for your business, but there's a catch. You have to know how to leverage it. The toughest part, standing out. For me, it was specifically that I didn't have hours to spend designing new ads and creating engaging videos in order to help my brand stand out. I'm sure you can relate. That's why I love that there's Ripple, an app designed especially for small businesses to help you attract new customers plus engage with existing ones on social media. Ripple is super easy to use. Just choose from their hundreds of design templates to start creating your next professional looking image or video in minutes. Then automatically share to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and more. Ripple also has goal tracking tools so you'll never have to wonder what's working and what's not. Right now, Ripple is offering Fire Nation a seven day free trial. Visit ripple.com slash fire and start your free trial today. That's R-I-P-L dot com slash fire. Fire Nation, are you frustrated by all the paperwork, endless employment laws, and all the regulations associated with running your own business? Me too, especially when it comes to payroll and benefits. But I understand my time is better spent working on my business versus in it. I don't have the time to be an expert in all things like taxes and regulations, and neither do you. Luckily, Gusto is a company that makes payroll, benefits, and HR easy for small businesses like us. In fact, 72% of customers spend less than five minutes to run their payroll, plus four out of five customers actually reduce payroll errors after switching to Gusto. You no longer have to be a big company to get great technology, great benefits, and great service for your team. Focus on your business, not payroll and paperwork, and get ready to love your payroll provider. Right now, Gusto is offering Fire Nation an exclusive limited time deal. Sign up today and you'll get three months free once you run your first payroll. Visit gusto.com slash fire to sign up today. That's gusto.com slash fire. And don't wait. The end of the year is the easiest time to switch payroll providers. So Natalie, we're back. And this next question I want to ask is actually kind of a personal one because I'll tell you, I just celebrated my five-year anniversary with Entrepreneur on Fire. You know, we're well over. Thank you. We're, we're approaching our 1900th episode at the time of this recording. I mean, I've been cranking. I've been going on. I mean, you know, I, I will, by the time this goes live, have gotten back from a 40-day overseas trip to New Zealand, to Australia, and hopefully we're going to be meeting up, by the way, in New Zealand. We're planning on it. And then to London. So, you know, I take my breaks and I take my long vacations. Uh, most of that's going to be completely turned off, but not 100%. And Ah, frankly, you know, five years cranking a nose to the grindstone with these, you know, with these decent sized vacations is good. But I love how you talk about sabbaticals and business sabbaticals and why you should take one every year or even more often. So can you talk to me and then through me, Fire Nation, listen up as well? Like, <laughs> what is the deal with this? Why should we take business sabbaticals? Yeah, so it's a pretty cool terminology that I kind of came up with last year when I decided enough was enough. I was a bit like you. I'd, I'd, been doing this for almost seven years yeah, at the time. Um, I just had a launch that had gone well, but not as well as I wanted. And I was I was really burnt out. I was tired and I was frankly cranky. I was like, I'm so done with, with always, you know, hustling and working hard. And even though I had a lot of freedom in my life playing Frisbee around the world and doing cool stuff, I was still always on. And I said to my, my team at the time, I said, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to just leave my business next year and I'm going to do it on my 40th birthday which was at the beginning of April, and I'm just going to take like a whole year off maybe, but at least three months. And <laughs> you can imagine the shock horror from them. But by the time it rolled around to April, we we had really good systems in place anyway, and it forced us to all sort of get on top of our game and really look at who's doing what and what I actually needed to do versus what I didn't um, and how I could kind of just leave my business for a, a period of time. And it rolled around into April 3rd. I got my Freedom Plan manuscript out. And then I said, right, I'm I'm going, I'm, I'm heading out of here. I'd never checked my email. I didn't check in on my team. I didn't look at my website. I, I just didn't even know what was going on. Um, and I also didn't care. <laughs> like, I was like, if this is a true sabbatical, I've just got to be resting, relaxing, reading, learning, enjoying, creating. And that's exactly what I did. Um, to be fair, it was also a really difficult time because as you'd appreciate when you're an ambitious person and you're usually gung-ho doing everything, suddenly having all this space and time was quite confronting. 
And uh, at first, I think I just threw myself into learning as much as I could about different things. Like I had a puppy, so I was learning how to be a good mm. puppy mum and learning about dog psychology. And I was just learning about the, you know, the art of happiness and reading lots of books. And then I was like, wait a minute, what about actually just taking some time out, walking through nature and just being okay with not knowing where you're going? And so I think a sabbatical is a really, really powerful thing for anybody to do at any point because it does allow you to step back and assess where the heck you're at? Are you actually really happy? Are you content? Are you growing? Are you doing the right thing? And is what you've been doing up until this point actually the best use of your time and the best possible way to live your life? And so for me, it was a quite a turbulent, chaotic time, if I'm really honest. And I went through doubts and moments of like, what the heck have I been doing? And then I came out the other side completely energized. I actually came off my sabbatical within three months because I was just ready. I was like, nope, I've had enough rest. I've had enough goodness. I'm fired up fired up fire nation and i want to get back into the next stage of my journey so i love that fire nation i mean how often do we just not take a step back take a deep breath like assess our life assess the path that we're on you know really make sure that we're doing day to day what we want to be doing day to day and we're not just caught up in the river of life which is what we try to get out of when we escaped corporate america and escaped that river of just you know that trap um and I look at you, Natalie, because you said you've been doing this now for like seven years. You know, you're moving on to your eighth year. I mean, you know, I'm a couple years behind you and, you know, I kind of feel like I'm going through these similar cycles. And, you know, you completely flipped your life 180 degrees, which you mentioned, and you've Mm -hmm. dealt with it unbelievably well. I mean, we were talking about in the pre-interview chat about the winter in New Zealand. You have a fireplace with your fire and like you were loving it (laughs) and you're kind of like just you're really digging like you're getting all into this. And this universal cycle of life, you know, you've been able to kind of complete now without losing your identity. I mean, you're still you, you're still adventurous, you're still on fire. You know, like I said, I'm looking forward to hanging out with you in New Zealand and nothing's obviously going to change when we meet because you're still that entrepreneurial free spirit. Like, how can you do that? How can you make that flip successfully without losing your identity? Because I might be facing this soon. I don't think I have all the answers on that one, John, but I definitely did refer to the universal cycles of life or the universal cycles of change, as it's more commonly known, to kind of help me through this. And if you allow me, I just kind of wanted to touch on it. It's basically these cycles of change that we all go through at any point in our life, whether we're quitting a job, whether we're getting married, whether we're having a baby, whatever it may be. Um, There's this time of creation, and that's typically, you know, when you're starting a business, you're all fired up, It's it's a new point, it's a new beginning, and you know that you're on a journey. And then you have growth, massive growth from that. You know, you're learning so much, you're expanding, and then you get into this nice steady state. And I think probably for the last three years, I've been in a a good steady state in my business. Like everything's been pretty smooth. It's been great. Revenue's been growing. I've been happy. And then I kind of hit that turbulence last year where I was like, you know what, I'm just not getting quite as much enjoyment out of this. Things need to change. It's feeling a little bit stagnant. And then you go into chaos when things start to fall apart. And they (laughs) they kind of did in a way. Like we changed the website over. We changed over all our systems. And it was it was crazy. Like everything kind of went wrong. Technology screwed up. It was a big change and it sort of knocked knocked me and the business and the team. And then you get to this point of dropping off, which is like the lowest point in the cycle of change. And I think that's when I was really kind of just de-energized by things. I'm really looking forward to my business sabbatical. And it it actually takes you to step back as a, a leader and kind of go, you know what, I think this is a really difficult point, but I'm going to come out the other side of it. And then you get into this dropping off. And that's where I got to in my sab- sabbatical where I was like, what do I want to drop out of here? Like what's not working for me? Um, And it's not a a fun time necessarily, but it's a really deep introspective time. And then you go into this beautiful meditation and dormancy bit, which is just where you just accept what you've got and you rest on it and you pontificate and you just kind of, I like to call it wallowing in what you're doing and you just become very at ease with where you're at and you're ready for the next cycle of change and growth. So we all go through that in all sorts of areas of our life. And I think until I'd read up about that and actually understood it, I didn't realize what was happening to me. So you can do this at any point in your life and it's a natural thing. And I think to experience true growth um, and fulfillment in your life, you do have to go through these highs and lows and these changes of chaos and turbulence and droppings off. And then it's like you're shedding a new skin for the next part of your journey. So John, when you're going to go through this, I think it's just Once again, to get really clear on not getting too held up on the identity of you right now. I mean, I know you're awesome and everybody loves you and you've got millions of fans out there, but (laughs) they love you because of who you are, not necessarily because of what you've done. And I think that's a really important thing to note. And same for me. I was like, are people not going to follow me if I'm not the suitcase 
suitcase entrepreneur anymore. And I was like, no, people have always appreciated the way I've lived my life with this sort of freedom emphasis and to always be very true to that and staying true to that. And that's what they'll follow and that's what they'll take away from it. Um, whether it's a brand change or whatever it may be, people are still with you because they love you. Um, and it's really hard to kind of let go of that identity, but know that it's the essence of you that will always stay with you. And that's the thing that you need to carry with you. Fire Nation, they're going to love you because of who you are, not because of what you've done. Those words are epic. I will never forget those words personally because it's so true, so key to remember that. And Natalie, don't show yourself short. You do have all the answers. And I love your use of words manifest and pontificate. Like, how do we not use that word more often? <laughs> I have no idea, but I'm in love with it. I'm going to use it in my next interview somehow. You'll hear it. Listen to the interview tomorrow, Fire Nation. Somehow I'm going to, I'm going to insert the word pontificate into the conversation. It might be awkward, but it's going in there. So Natalie, let's end strong. <laughs> Share with Fire Nation a little more detail about your book and the best place that we, Fire Nation, can go find this book, to read this book, and to add a little more freedom and spice into our life. Yeah, I think it's a really unique book because a lot of people call it a business and lifestyle Bible. Um, and it really is talking about your true journey, like what's unique to you? How can you monetize your skills, experience and knowledge and turn them into a business that fits your lifestyle? and not the other way around. So I think a lot of people talk about um, hustling and working super hard and doing that all the time. And I think you should be living your life and your business should be, as we've talked about, supporting that. So the book is really designed for people who are just starting out and or have a business, but they're really not feeling like they have a lot of freedom in their time. So it's about creating systems. It's about outsourcing. It's about sales funnels. And there's also a ton in there about travel and relationships and running your business from the road. So I think it's got enough for everybody in there and you can kind of pick and choose as you go. And you can go and grab it at suitcaseentrepreneur.com forward slash book. And now it's in like Barnes and Noble and yeah. iBook and all these wonderful places plus being online. So it's it's everywhere. Just Google it. What about BAM? I'm hearing about this books a million these bookstores popping up. What's, what's the deal? Yeah, it's in BAM as well. Yes. I actually don't know. When I'm over in the US uh, in a week and a half, I'm going to go in and I'm going to go BAM. Where BAM. are you? And I'm going to hopefully find my book. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And what's cool for us too, Natalie's authors, like Amazon starting to open up all these physical bookstores too. So I mean, that's going to be really cool to see. And now there's just going to be ironic though, isn't it? It is. You know, like Amazon, the digital nation, really going into physical bookstores and also taking over supermarkets and making them all like seamless and automated. They're just it's pretty taking crazy. over the world. They're, I mean, they bought Whole Foods, they lower the price by 40%. I mean, they're just taking over the world. So buy Amazon stock, Fire Nation. Even if you hate them as a corporation, they'll make you a lot of money in the long run. Maybe not tomorrow, but 40 years from now, full show. So Fire Nation, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And hello, you've been hanging out with NS and JLD today. So keep up the heat <laughs> and head over to eofire.com. Type Natalie in the search bar and her show notes page will pop up with everything that we've been talking about today. These are the best show notes in the business. Timestamps, links galore. And of course, you can also find episode 27 with Natalie Sisson when you type in Natalie in the search bar. And again, just for just for kicks and giggles, like go ahead and listen to that because wow, it's it's a pretty funny episode for me. You know, like this again, this podcaster who's like shaking, holding a piece of paper, trying to ask questions. It's just it's epic. Um, I go back and listen to those episodes. Anytime I think that things are going well in life, like I go back and listen to my early episodes and be like, oh yeah, that's that's where you came from. Those are your roots. And Fire Nation Soupcase Entrepreneur dot com slash book. That's where you need to go, or just visit Bam or Barnes & Noble when you see it on the side of the road. Stop in, say hi, and uh, pick up that book. So Natalie, thank you for sharing your journey with Fire Nation today. For that, we salute you, and we'll catch you on the flip side. Thank you so much, Sean. It's been a blast. Bam! Hey, Fire Nation. Hope you enjoyed our chat with Natalie today. Check out our free podcasting course so that you can create, grow, and monetize your own podcast, freepodcastcourse.com. I'll catch you there, or I'll catch you on the flip side.